This is our first theory video for MA1001. Uh, we're going to talk about number systems and inequalities. Let's start with number systems. So we're thinking about various different types of numbers. Um, for example, the numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on are called the natural numbers. And um, the if we write the cap a capital N with two backs on it here, uh, that's the set of all natural numbers. It's not a natural number, it's the set of them. These are the books, this is the library. So um, similarly, we can have the, the integers. This is capital Z with two diagonals. Is the set of all numbers dot 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 minus three minus two minus 1 is 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 going on forever in both directions. These are the integers. And Z is the set of integers. And we can have uh, the set Q is the set of ratios P divided by Q, such that P is an integer, and Q is also an integer, and Q is not 0. And these are the rational numbers, the fractions of integers, okay, the set of rational numbers. Um, so, for example, the number 4 is, of course, a natural number, but it's also an integer. Um, but it's also a rational number, because 4 is 4 divided by 1, or 8 divided by 2, or um, it's also minus 8 divided by minus 2. And so it's also a rational number. The same number can be in these different collections. The um, natural numbers lie inside the integers. They're a subset of the integers, and they're a subset of the rational numbers. Um, so when we look at rational numbers, we have to think about uh, they're, they're, they're defined to be these fractions. But how do they um, look when you write them down as decimals? So for example, the fraction 3 halves can also be written as 1.5. And that means it has, it has an integer part and then a decimal. And this is the decimal part. And uh, it only has that one decimal, uh, that one digit after the decimal point, the 5. And that's what we call a terminating decimal. It terminates. There's only finitely many um, decimals after the decimal point. On the other hand, we could have other numbers like, um, like uh, let's say, for example, one third. It's 0.333. So there's zero as the integer part, then the point, and the threes go on forever. Um, or more complicated example: one two five six one four five divided by nine 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 zero zero turns out to be 12.574024024202 da, 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 forever and it's the 402s that keep going on and on repeating that's what we call repeating uh, repeating decimals um, so we have terminating decimals these are repeating decimals this is 333 three, three. the threes go on forever Okay, so we can have terminating repeating decimals, or we can just have a, a whole number. Of course, we could have like 4, um, which, of course, you could think of as 4.00000 forever. But, of course, it's much easier to just think of it as just 4. So we could have a, a whole number, integer number, um, and then we can write it without decimals. We could have a, a fraction, which a, a rational number, which has repeating decimals like this or like this. So we could have some non-repeating part and then starts to repeat. Or it could have terminating decimals. Um, so, and, and it's not obvious, but it's true that um, all rationals um, are um, terminating, uh, repeating, or integer. Um, so that's, that's all we run into with it, with all the rational numbers. And conversely, if we have a terminating um, or a repeating or an integer a number, then it has to be rational. So that's exactly what the rationals look like. So, But there are, of course, other numbers. If you were just to write down some integer part and then, oops, not that stuff, um, some integer part and then uh, and then write down some, some decimals, 
and so on and so forth. Any pattern at all of decimals that will always give you a number. It always, it's a number. Um, but it's, if it doesn't repeat, then it, then it's not a rational number. So we said that they had to either terminate, or, or they had to be integer, or they terminated, or they repeated. So if it's none of those, it's an irrational number. Um, it's not uh, terminating. Uh, it's not integer. And it's not, which in a sense is terminating without even getting to the decimals. Uh, and it's not repeating. And the most famous example of such a number is pi, which is something like 3.1415, da 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 on and on and on forever. And there turns out to be, it's not obvious, but it turns out to be there's no, there's sim no simple repeated pattern going on there. So, um, so that's an example of an irrational number. And we've got um, the, all the numbers put together, r with two uh, backs to it there, is, uh, is the set of all real numbers. So that includes the rational and the irrational. Okay, both the rational and irrational numbers make up the real numbers. We can look at a picture of the real numbers by looking at the number line. The number line is this infinitely long line. We can only draw a little part of it. Somewhere on it there's a zero. Somewhere there's a one. Somewhere there's a two. Somewhere there's a three. Somewhere there's a four. And so on and so forth. Right? Minus one, minus two, and so on. And so pi is 3.1, so it's four, something like that. So pi is somewhere in there. And uh, gives us a sense of what we're talking about. And we have, of course, um, the obvious fact that um, a and B are numbers. A is less than B means exactly the same thing as saying that A is to the left of B on the number line. So we can see in a picture what it means. So let's talk a little bit about less than and greater than and all that stuff. Um, less than signs and greater than signs and all that sort of stuff. Um, so if we have um, A uh, less than B, that happens exactly when A, when you shift A over by an amount C, and you shift B over by the same amount C, you get exactly the same, whether it's less than uh, before, exactly when it's less than after. It, you add, add C to both sides. So that's simple. Um, but what if we don't add, what if we multiply? And this is for any, any C, uh, for any real number C. But what if we instead multiply, if we have A less than B, that won't be changed. The, the inequality remains exactly the same when we multiply, um, as long as uh, as long as c is positive. For pi, when you multiply both sides by a positive number, it stays. Uh, the inequality stays the same, but it swaps if you uh, multiply by a negative number. It's greater than b c for any c negative. So it swaps uh, signs when you multiply by a negative. And then, um, then of course, there's what happens if we multiply uh, and, and find zeros coming out. a, b equals zero. Product of two numbers is zero exactly when a equals zero or b equals zero. Here I want to point out there's something a little bit peculiar about the word or. When I say or, I always mean this is true or this is true or both or both uh, is understood in mathematics. It's not necessarily always understood in ordinary English. So for me, or means A is true, or B is true, or both. The un or both is always understood. So, um, so we've got now all the inequalities that we need, and we'll think about um, the next thing we want to think about is powers and roots. We want to think about powers and um, uh, first, and then we'll think about roots the you know, sort of opposite direction of pow doing powers. So what are powers? What do I mean by powers? Well, let's go back to, to, to simply what is multiplying. 5 times 2 means 5 2's out of, all added together. So they're 5, 2, 3, 4, 5 2's, and they're all multiplied together. Uh, sorry, they're all added together. They're all added together. So that's what 5 2's mean, 5 times 2. What does 2 to the 5th mean? It means you still have 5 2's, but you multiply them all together. Not instead of, isn't not adding them, but multiplying them all together. Okay, so that's what we mean by uh, by taking powers. At least if the power is a simple positive integer, like 
like uh, like five. Um, we still have to worry about what does it mean to take two to the minus five, two to the one fifth, and so on. Other other more complicated versions of the story. Let's just look at a simple uh, simple issue that we could run into. Um, look at minus signs. And if we look at minus five to the four, the very definition we've written down is that means you write down four minus fives and you multiply them all together. Now to multiply them, because the minus sign gets in the way, I want to put parentheses in. Never be afraid of putting in extra parentheses. It's fine. Um, just to make sure, make very clear what you're doing. Because if you don't put in the parentheses, this would be this would be a mess. So I put in the parentheses there, and then I'm going to multiply them all together. That's minus 5 to the 4. The 4 minus 5s all multiplied together. Now, minus signs cancel in pairs is a good motto to remember. Um, so those two will cancel, and those two will cancel. They'll cancel in pairs. And since there's a pair here and a pair here, the, all the minus signs cancel. And so this is exactly the same as 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which you can easily compute out as 625. On the other hand, what if I put the minus sign outside the parentheses? Minus sign of 5 to the 4. Is it the same thing? No, it's not. Because the minus sign sits at the front, and then we have 5 to the 4 is given by taking 5s, 4 of them, and multiplying together. And so we get 625 from the, the 4 or 5s multiplied together, and then we still have the minus sign at the front. And see, that's 625, and that's minus 625, so they're definitely not the same. Okay, so that's how we can uh, think about simple examples of powers. There are obviously much trickier ones. The first one we want to think about is, is the zero power. We'll just say that for any um, any real number, let's say a, a to the zero is one, unless there's one special case, a is zero, and then what happens? Zero to the zero, what does that mean? And we'll leave that as undefined. We won't give it a defined value. There's no meaning to that expression. Okay, We won't allow 0 to the 0 as a meaningful expression in mathematics. We'll run into this problem again later. Okay, So we now know what the powers are, at least for uh, 0 powers and positive integer powers. So that's good. We've got part of the way. Now we want to think about roots. Roots. What are roots? Um, square roots, cube roots, that sort of thing. What do I mean? When I say that... Um, 2 cubed is 8. Um, I could say that backwards as saying that 2 is the number whose cube, uh, which when cubed gives you 8. And so you could write that the other way around. And instead of seeing the, the 2 is the input and 8 is the output, the 8 is the input and the 2 is the output, you're taking a cube root instead of a cube, a third power. It's the opposite operation. Um, so um, you have to be a bit careful to define it, though. It's a bit tricky to make precise sense out of it. So um, so we, uh, we want to say that if a is a number greater than or equal to 0 real number, and um, for, uh, for the moment we'll just worry about n being uh, a positive integer, natural number, there is a unique, a unique uh, number, which b, which is written as nth root of a. Um, which is greater than or equal to zero, and so that so that b to the n is a. In other words, um, we can say that uh, b is n root of a means exactly the same as that b to the n is a. Okay, so very easy to make sense out of. Um, we have to be a bit careful about other values, positives, negatives. What do we do? Um, if n is odd, it turns out that we can do a little bit better. Um, there is also an nth root of um, of uh, uh, negative uh, values, a less than zero. So it's an nth root. So nth root a is defined and is also less than zero. So it's well defined. But it doesn't work if n is even. So this is very subtle. It's very tricky. Right? So we could, for example, define something like a cube root, a cube root of minus eight, and it turns out to be minus two. So it's not too hard to find in that case. So there are cube roots um, uh, for for negative numbers as well. 
but there aren't square roots in, in this in among the real numbers. So um, finally, we want to look at some of the simple rules that, that work and don't work for these kinds of things. If we look at the fifth root of 7 times 3, um, it is exactly uh, the fifth root of 7 times the fifth root of 3. And that's not hard to check. You just have to bring them to fifth powers and see what happens. Um, but um, we have to be a bit careful um, what, with these sorts of operations. The fifth root of, what about 7 divided by 3? And that's all inside the root symbol. I have to make the root symbol big enough to make sure that it covers the whole 7 divided by 3. So I can see that that's inside. And that's, again, the fifth root of 7 divided by the fifth root of 3. So that's fairly easy to do. It works well. In other words, root, taking roots, in this case fifth roots, works well with multiplying and it works well with dividing. It doesn't work well with almost anything else. It doesn't work well with adding. For example, the fifth root of 7 plus 3 is not the fifth root of 7 plus the fifth root of 3. And that would also be a problem for subtracting. If I change the plus to a minus here and to a minus here, it still doesn't work. It's also not true. So we have to be very careful about what operations go well. They fl fly right through this, the, the, the root symbol. Multiplying goes right through. It passes through. And uh, dividing passes through. Adding and subtracting don't.